Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, here is Van Amsen, and if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And today we got an excellent problem to solve. It's called interleaving three number 97 from uh, lead code. So this question is often asked in coding interview, and it's a fantastic exercise in understanding string and dynamic programming. So uh, let's get started. So before we go into code, let's understand the problem. We have three strings, so uh, S1, S3, uh, and S2. And our task is to find out if S3 uh, can be formed uh, by interleaving S1 and S2. So now what does interleaving mean? Uh, let's go through some examples. So imagine uh, S1 is this uh, red string, so A, A, B, C, C, and S2 is blue one, so D, B, B, C, A. And now if S3 is A, A, D, B, B, C, B, C, A, C, uh, then yes, S3 is an interleaving of both uh, S1 and S2. And uh, it's uh, really well depicted on the picture. So however, if S3 is uh, somewhat different, uh, let's say we have A, A, B, and then B, B, so instead of D, uh, then the answer would be no, because it's not interleaving. And uh, let's highlight a few key points you need to consider before diving into the code. So uh, always check for the problem constraint. For this problem, we have length uh, of S1 and S2 will not exceed 100. And uh, also S3 will not be longer than uh, 200. So this gives us uh, some flexibility in choosing uh, algorithm and you can tackle this problem in multiple ways. So for example, 2D dynamic programming, 1D dynamic programming, or even uh, recursion with memoization. So we will focus on 1D dynamic programming today, mainly because it's a space optimized solution. Uh, a quick tip for interviews, uh, if the combination length of S1 and S2 aren't equal to length of S3, then S3 can't be an interleaving uh, string and exit early and save computational time. So before we dive into the actual coding, let's discuss a crucial optimization. So usual problems like uh, this one are tackled using 2D dynamic programming, uh, where you have a uh, uh, 2D uh, array, let's say, yep, let's write dp of i uh, j. And uh, we can store uh, and check whether uh, s3 uh, i plus j uh, can be formed by interleaving s1 so it will be to uh, i and also s2 to j. Uh, so good so far. Uh, but did you know that we can optimize this to use only a, a 1D array? Yes, that's right. So how do we transit from the 2D solution uh, into 1D1? Uh, well, here is the trick. If you observe closely, you will notice that uh, to fill the value at uh, uh, dpij, we need to consider dp at position of i minus 1 at j and also uh, dp of i j minus 1. It's j. So this means the current state only depends on uh, the previous state, not on state two or three steps back. Because of this, we can get away with just storing the current row in our table, uh, dynamic programming. And uh, in simpler terms, we only need to know the previous row to calculate the value for the current row. So, uh, why not just keep a single row and update?
update it as we go along. So this is what do uh, we do in 1D dynamic program approach. And it's an excellent example of space optimization and always a good point to bring up uh, on uh, interview. So, uh, okay, now that we are clear with 2D to 1D transition, so let's uh, get our hands dirty with some Python code. So let's start by defining our function. Uh, so yeah, we have uh, it's interleaving provided by lead code and we will calculate the length of S1, S2 and S3 first. So if they don't add up, we return false uh, immediately. So M and L will be len S, len S and S3. And if M and L return false. Okay, so uh, notice that if M plus uh, N is not equal to L, we are returning false immediately and that's the early exit strategy I talk about. So now let's initialize our 1D uh, dynamic array and we will call it DP. And uh, it will tell us whether a substring S3 I plus J can be formed by interleaving uh, S I and S uh, to J. So initially our values are set to false except uh, to uh, DP0, which is set to true. So M less than N return self is interleaf S2, S1, S3 and DP false false times n plus one and dp zero will be true. Uh, true. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next uh, let's fill uh, in this dp array. So we will iterate through uh, s1 and s2 updating dp based on a certain condition. So for j in range 1 n plus 1 and dp j dp and s2 j uh, and for i in range 1 to m plus 1 our dp0 will be dp0 and s1 i minus 1 s3 i minus 1 and for j in range 1 to n plus 1 dpj will be dpj and s1 i minus 1 equal s3 i plus j minus 1 or dp of j minus 1 and s j minus 1 s3 yeah, uh, i j minus 1 so uh, okay so and finally we iterate over uh, s1 and update our dp array accordingly and as we look through S1 and S2, we update the DP array based on the uh, transition logic. Uh, so remember, this transition logic is the same as what uh, we would use in a 2D uh, array, but we have optimized it to fit into 1D array. So, and that's the beauty of this approach. So look at that. Our tests uh, uh, need to be checked so return dpn and uh, in return statement we will uh, provide uh, uh, the state of uh, interleaving or uh, not so let's run it for the test cases and see if it's working so yeah uh, all good for test case one also test case two false as mentioned previously so uh, the last element in dp will tell us uh, if s3 
can be formed by interleaving both uh, S1 and S2. And it's uh, that simple yet uh, optimized uh, thanks to transition to uh, 2D to 1D. And uh, before we end this session, let's uh, run it also submit it for uh, synthesis cases to verify uh, if it's correct. Yeah. So as you can see, our implementation beat 95.5% uh, with respect to uh, runtime and also 92 with respect to uh, memory. I think for the same approach, I even got 31 milliseconds. So beating 99% uh, yeah, and 92 with respect to memory. So uh, probably different test cases or uh, some uh, deviation. Uh, and yeah, but it's a quite optimal uh, solution. So uh, before we end the session, let's talk about complexity. Uh, so the time complexity is O M times N and the space complexity is uh, O minimum uh, M of N. Why uh, the space uh, optimization? Because we use uh, one the dynamic programming. So uh, feel free to try out uh, the other approaches as well. And remember understanding the reasoning behind the each uh, approach is key, uh, essentially, uh, and especially uh, in coding uh, interview setting. And all right, that's it for today. If you found this helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and uh, subscribe to uh, more coding adventure and tutorials. And if you have any question, ideas or uh, insight, please share them in the comment section below. And, uh, and as always, keep practicing, happy coding, and see you next time.